Hi YouTubers, it's Dave out in Western Pennsylvania, USA again. I've worked with, uh, in particular, uh, aluminum, magnesium uh, cells, uh, primary cells, and uh, last year, uh, January 6th, 2016, I put up a video on a reverse Dickens cell. And uh, uh, what I have here, instead of having copper wire wrapped around a, uh, a rod of magnesium insulated by uh, some type of foam, that's a conventional Dickens, and then it's placed in a bath of water with or without electrolyte. Um, I'm getting 1.70 volts here. And my reverse Dickens cell uh, is basically a piece of hacksawed copper what is it, about an inch, if I had to guesstimate, outside diameter, and uh, a rod of magnesium that I get from eBay from China. Um, I have alligator clip. They use radiator hose clamps. Uh, some of the people that investigate, like Sterling, so I have alligator clip around it, and in fact, I'm going to have to bathe these magnesium electrodes. I'll upload the video on uh, a recommended way to clean them to optimize uh, at time zero a clean surface before passivation. Now the reason I do a reverse thickens here and I have a rubber septum at the bottom and uh, organic chemists use these a lot with round bottom flasks and reactions. This is some Sigma Aldrich natural rubber septa and this would be about the size diameter I would use. Very common in the chem labs particularly when you want a vacuum going to put uh, or put nitrogen gas flow through a round bottom flask and uh, what I have is insulating the magnesium rod is some matting that you can get at a dime store a dollar store uh, cut it it's polyurethane I believe and uh, it's meshed and uh, my earlier video will show you clearly what that looks like so we're getting about 1.70 volts here. Uh, let's take a look at the amperage. Uh, getting about 60 amps, milliamps, dropping down. It'll rebound. I can live with that. Now, the reason I have a reverse Dickens, see the voltage drop down, the open voltage, but it's rebounding. The reason that I'm doing a reverse Dickens here, I don't want the water bath around there. I'm actually uh, studying electrolytes, which is so important with these magnesium batteries. And of course, this is a magnesium air battery, so there's enough airflow going to get through to the electrolyte. Um, I, uh, I'm interested in uh, various electrolytes and passivation of the magnesium surface, which is a problem. Uh, ionic liquids and that way I can place uh, various electrolytes including gel electrolytes inside this cylinder of copper and uh, very easily uh, start to do battery performance so that's why I uh, have a reverse I can easily pull the magnesium rod out and insert another and uh, here's one that obviously is going to have to go into a bath a recommended bath uh, of uh, about pH 11 or 12 with some detergent. Uh, I'll upload the video as I said. Our voltage has rebounded very nicely, the open uh, voltage, and uh, that way I can charge this with uh, various uh, solid state electrolytes, g uh, gel electrolytes, ionic liquids, and uh, be able to uh, gauge performance. As always, thank you for watching, and if you have any recommendations or your own observations, let me know. I tried putting uh, rubber washers uh, around the magnesium cylinder, but uh, this matting I have in there works just fine. I'm not shorting out by contacting the magnesium with the copper. So there you have it, and uh, all the best. Bye for now.